Right, what have I got today? Boosh, today it is another Astrolux. Now, I'm a big fan of the Astrolux. Um, one of the last ones I looked at um, and I was really impressed with was the Astrolux FT03. A beautiful thrower, nice button, beautiful UI, um, very thoughtfully designed in a Type C interface. So, I, I really enjoy that. So, I'm looking forward to having a look at this. And this was recommended by one of the subscribers as well. So, there's another reason why I'm eager to have a look at this. Um, so this is the Astrolux EC01 and it, it maxes out at around 3500 lumens so that's pretty good from one single emitter and it's able to do that because um, it uses a pretty good battery and it's a pretty good system. So let's see what we get in the box and then I can rub it on about it. So a lovely piece of foam there if you get bored. Right here's a manual which I'm not going to read. Um, but I'll give you a quick glimpse inside. In fact, there's a little cheat sheet on the back there for Andural, which is the UI, but I will cover that in depth. But there it is if you want to have a look. Um, there's Batman's logo there just for a laugh. Uh, so I'll throw that in the bin. Boosh, I won't be reading that. Uh, this is the adapter which I shall go through. And I think you've got the unit and then what looks like maybe a lanyard. And I think that's about it. And there's a, maybe there's an O-ring in there, but I'll, I'll have a look. Right, so that's your lot. Boosh, throw that in the bin. Let's get the unit out. So let's have a look at this first. Uh, this looks like the lanyard. Now I like the chest lanyards because I know there are a lot of subscribers who watch this who swear by lanyards. I'll be honest, I don't basically use them because I don't find a need. It's either in my pocket um, or being used. Ah, there are O-rings in there as well. So, right, you've got a couple of O-rings, which is nice to see. Um, and, and they just replace um, ones that you can shred because it does sometimes happen. So what happens is, between the machined parts, in other words, the threaded sections where it threads in, you will have, and I shall show you that. Right, if I zoom in a bit, here, and I'm going to move it with my fingernail, that, that there is the O-ring. So what that does is that tries to make sure that you have integrity on this joint, in other words, a seal. Um, so you've got your, your threads there, which are pretty beautiful. They're, um, they're quite angular. Um, they're not the cheap cheap ones and they've been anodized or so nice to see pretty smooth as well um, But if they do shred which can happen if they're unseated um, You've got a couple of spare ones there and they look decent decent enough quality. They're fine Yeah, so I'll keep them to one side just in case the worst happens Now the lanyard uh, feels okay. It's not like a double skinned. It's a single um, Pretty standard stuff looks like the cheap sort and I'll test it for strength I'll give, it, I'll give it my very scientific pull, pull test. Yeah, I'm pulling that full force, as you can see. It's hurting my skin, and it's no issues there. That's working absolutely fine, so no problems with that. If you want to use a lanyard, it's there. Now, there is an adapter here. Now, what's the adapter for? Well, this uh, flashlight uses the 21700 battery, so what I'll do is, here's a 21700. Um, ignore the wrapper on here. This is just an ODB wrapper, but this underneath this is a Samsung 40T Which uh, I use for most of my lights now. It's, it's got a decent capacity and a nice output uh, amp, amp, amp wise speaking anyway So on most of the flashlights I look like look look at you're using a an 18650 and just for a laugh This one has the British flag right, lads, That's the war one. Let's celebrate with a pint of me! Huzzah! 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 So, back to this anyway, um, 21700. Now this will fit, but you can use this adapter. So, as you can see, that goes in absolutely fine. But if you thought, well, I don't have a 21700 battery and I'm not interested in getting them, what you can do is you can put an 18650 in, but obviously, if you put that in, you've got problems. Look, it rattles. It rattles more than a, a Texas rattlesnake. So what you need to do is, you need to put it in this sleeve adapter so the sleeve just goes around the outside and increases the diameter because obviously 21700 means it's 21 millimeters wide and this is an 18650 so it's only 18 millimeters wide so there you go and very little rattle and it will function and work and just to show you i'll put that on and then i'll turn it on there you go so that's a standard 18650 i think that's a samsung 30q under that wrapper and that works absolutely fine so let's take that out and what I will do is I'll test it with the battery that they intend you to use it with, which is the 21700. So take the sleeve out, bin all that, right. Get the battery and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. 
Okay, so this also has USB charging, which is really handy. It's not an issue for people like me. I've got loads of chargers around the house, but for some people who just want one flashlight and one method of re-energizing re it, so to speak. So what they have chosen to do on this one is they have a USB recharging. So if you can see there, you've got like a flap now under here, now I'm not a big fan of these flaps because what happens is it decreases waterproofing. In other words, your ingress protection tends to lessen because of these, because this allows water to get in. Although, now I have studied their uh, literature and what they say is, don't you worry, this is definitely IPX8. Okay, now IPX8 means you can put this under two meters of water. So imagine two meters of water on this pushing down, trying to get in for two hours and it won't go in. <sighs> That's what they're saying. Now, am I calling them a liar? No, but I would suggest that you take that with a pinch of salt. This will probably be IPX7 at best. So be careful because these flaps are generally not the best. Um, and if it's not seated properly, you're certainly not going to get IPX8. So they're claiming IPX8. I would say um, it's probably IPX7, but I'm not calling them liars. That's just my personal opinion. So it looks like a pretty nice torch actually. So I'll show you the uh, charging function first. So take that to one side. Now look, hallelujah, it's a type C. Now I know I always rabbit on about this and I complain. I prefer type C. It's more robust, you can have higher charging rates and I use type C for everything else. So I don't want to carry another cable and go back to the old micro USB cables. So let's have a look. Now I have one here. So this is a type C, so as you can see, it is rounded. Now just to show you the difference, I will have one. Here's an old one. Here's a type C, uh, that's one there. So this is the old type. So this is a micro USB. So can you see the difference in the heads there? I'll show you them together. So you have, this is micro USB and this is type C on the bottom. So you see the difference. So one of the benefits of this is, it doesn't matter which way up you put it in, it's always right, instead of having to put it in and then turn it and say, oh, is that not right? So let's see if this charges. So to charge, you just plug it in, and then your other end is just type A, and you just stick that. So for, for this, uh, I'll stick it in a power bank. So there's the unit there, we'll stick it in, bang, and then you can see what happens. What happens is when you plug it in, you get the Eye of Sauron here. If you're a big fan of Lord of the Rings, lucky for you, this is perfect. It's got the Eye of Sauron. And then when that's finished charging, it'll turn from this nice red to a green, meaning fully charged and you don't need to charge anymore. I have to che check this because I've carried this for more than two weeks and used it daily. Um, and what I've found is it charges pretty rapidly, um, probably more rapidly than a lot of the other char uh, the other flashlights I've tested. Um, so it's probably... 1.5 to 2 amps basically um, it charges this larger cell anyway very fast so I've had no problems with that the only thing I noticed you can't do is if we want to charge from type C to type C so here's a type C to type C cable in other words both ends are type C which means you can use power delivery let's see if it works on this so there's the type C slot so we will plug it in and you can see that this is on and then we'll plug it into the flashlight there and as you can see even though that it's on there this is feeling the charge in other words what's probably happening in here is there's no negotiation going on here because with a type c to type c you generally have for power delivery you need some sort of negotiation where it'll say hello i exist okay what is it that you want it's not getting a signal back to tell it what it wants so it's not delivering any power so just to be aware you're gonna to have to use a type a to type c unfortunately but okay I'm certainly not going to lose sleep over that, put it that way. Okay, so back on with the light. So I quite like it. The only thing that I didn't like so much after carrying it for a couple of weeks, the, it feels like it's sort of half finished. This is quite bulky, which I'm not a big fan of, but I'm not going to mark them down on that because that's just my personal preference. And it really functionally has nothing to do with the light. But these fins, listen, can you hear that? And can you see my skin coming off there? See? They're super sharp. You could actually, if you'd run out of um, graters, if you want to make a cheese sandwich or something, you could just grate some cheese over there, no problem, and it would probably work. Um, I mean, these heat sinks are designed to dissipate heat. Uh, this doesn't produce a massive amount of heat. It's pretty, pretty good, actually. It's one of the better ones. 
Um, you know, it's not up, up there with like the Fireflies and the MSRD fours, where it's producing ridiculous amount of heat, m amounts of heat, and you can make s'mores around a campfire and things like that. That's not necessarily a case with this, but um, it's more of a design aesthetic. Um, and I like this um, stainless steel section here, uh, but it's pretty good. And as you can see, it is a smooth reflector. So what I'm talking about is the silver bit around the LED. So the LED is in the center there, and you can see this smooth section. So just to compare that. You can have a, a, a sorry an orange peel reflector in there this is a smooth reflector here so as you can see perfectly smooth perfectly smooth piece of material there and then if you look at this one this is like an orange peel that's why they call it an op or an orange peel reflector because the surface is pitted and aberrated there it's, it's not it's not straightforward and um, so what's the point of that well i'll quickly go over that and i will do this rapidly because i know some people cry and get upset when it when this takes too long Okay, so generally you have your uh, your PCB here with your LED and, and light comes out pretty much willy-nilly. It comes out where it wants, even though they do put this dome over the top anyway. So it comes out and goes all over. Now, one of the ways of steering that light is to have a reflector. So if you imagine this is a side view, so this is a smooth reflector. So pretty much like this one here. So what happens is you get the light comes out from the LED. Uh, comes on the wall like this but then what happens is this reflector bounces the light and directs it uh, to a degree anyway so you get this this sort of beam profile on the wall you get your your hot spot um, and then your spill so I'll show you that so if I turn this on now as you can see this is your spill directly from the LED and then here's the spot which is directed as designed by the reflector now the problem is this spot is great because it travels a long distance but watch what happens it pretty much ruins and obscures detail up close, which is unfortunate. Now, there are ways of mitigating that. You can either, you know, turn it down a bit, keep turning it down until it's no longer a problem like that, or at the same level, you can just keep bringing it back, bringing it back, bringing it back, and then it's less of an issue, but still irritating anyway. So one of the ways around that is, is to use an orange peel reflector. So in this, in this example, which is what they've done on this uh, unit, they've got the same, if you imagine again, this is a cross section, but instead of smooth, it's all bumped. So what happens is you get the same sort of spill, but then the spot is transitioned into the spill. You're trying to get the best of both worlds. You're trying to get a bit of throw, but not too much, and it's less annoying up close. So for example, if we turn this on. So as you can see, I've now I've turned that quite high there. Now, as you can see, we've got this uh, spill here, which is fine. But can you see the transition between the two zones? There's not such a marked zone of difference is there and then it's obscuring detail less it certainly does to a degree but it's it happens less i mean the way to get around that totally for up close stuff is really to use a tir setup which i'm not going to cover in this one because it's irrelevant because it's not in this but as you can see you, you do away with that and the whole thing's a beautiful flood which is great it's great up close but it's useless at distance so what they're trying to do here is they're trying to get the best of both worlds they're trying to give you a bit of spot which can you can do something with distance wise but also a nice bit of spill and transition them together so i think they've done a good job actually interesting if you look very closely at that led so hang on what i'll do is i'll try and get a good angle and then there so if you zoom in you can see it's almost like sectioned into four smaller leds um, so an interesting design um, the actual led used on this is the xhp now it's a cree one and it's the XHP, I think it's the 50.23V. Um, so quite interesting. Um, one of the things I noticed, um, I'd not really used one of these before, is it was quite green on the tint. I mean, this comes in two tints, and as you can see from the box, just to show you, the tint I uh, got here is the, um, they call, weirdly, they call it 6,000 to 6,500. I don't know why they're giving you two figures. Maybe it's... Sometimes that on one part of the beam and sometimes that on another part of the beam. I don't know, but what essentially what they're saying is this is a cool white, uh, meaning that the light that comes out of it is rather cool, on the cool side. In other words, like a cool overcast day. The other end of the spectrum, as you get lower in the Kelvin values, so 4,000 to 5,000, you know, 4,500K, um, which I generally prefer is a warmer, more neutral light. And by neutral, I mean it's closer to sunlight. In other words, what you get on a sunny day, it's certainly not bright white, is it? Like in, like, a, like you would see on, an, on a, um, a fluorescent tube or something like that. It's generally a lot sort of nicer. And I found the tint on this, yes, although I'm not uh, a big fan of the whites, that they're, they're fine, they work. 
um, I found there was a lot of green going on. I don't know if you can see that on camera. No, you can't really. Um, it's certainly not um, viewable on here. In fact, it looks quite nice on here. Um, but unfortunately, outside, it's got almost a green tint to it. I don't know what that's about. I'll, I'm not going to mark them down too much on that because I'm really nitpicky. You've got to understand that I've, I review a lot of flashlights and I'm looking at them very intensely. So most people, that's not going to be an issue. So I'll let them off on that. And the other thing is, in fact, I'll bring up a picture. So I'll bring up a picture on the left here. So if you have a look, um, what you've got is you've got um, like zones. So if you look at this picture that I've, I've pulled up here. So I took this outside um, just on a path. And as you can see, if you look at the beam there, you've got something of a hot spot in the middle, which is, you, you, you can't really see that very well because of the terrain that's hitting. But then you've got this main section. And then can you see you've got like a secondary ring um, just under my hand there, which is strange. So I'm not sure. I, 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 what I did was I compared this to a, now I've got one somewhere, there's one. Now I love um, orange peel reflectors because you're getting the best of both worlds, but um, I tried this against this, which is the Convoy, if I can get it to focus, the Convoy S11. Now that doesn't have this problem. Now what I think's happening here is, I think there's something going on with this design where it's either reflecting off the chamfer on the ring here, or there's something maybe happening down. You see the gap between the uh, LED there. I don't know whether that secondary ring is cause an artifact of some manner because it certainly doesn't happen on this although this does use a slightly different setup so it's hard to say I don't know what's going on there um, but as you can see from that image um, it's certainly not smoothed out very much is it I, I was unsure on that and I'm not a, I'm not a fan of that that was the only thing I didn't really like about the beam other than that it does a pretty decent job I mean you're getting up to 3500 lumens which is pretty nice and like I say they claim an IPX8 I would say probably 7 but okay if you believe them it's an IPX8 uh, okay so let's move on a bit so what I want to do is I want to show you the basic functioning. So basic functioning means I'm going to have to go through the UI. Now UI just stands for user interface and on this one it uses Andural, which is an open source one. I think Toy Keeper is the person who comes up with it. So, you know, big props to them. They've done an extremely good job because there's a lot of features. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go over them now. So I, I do forewarn you, this will take some time. Okay, so let's start. Right, so basic functions first. Okay, so basic functions are on or off. Okay, so you can turn it on and turn it off. Dead simple, eh? N who can ask for anything more? Now, over, above and beyond that, there are a lot of options. So. When it's on, you can ramp it up or down. So if you press and hold, it ramps up. So that's maximum brightness or ramping anyway, not maximum brightness. And then click and hold and it will ramp down. That's the least amount of brightness. So I reckon that's probably about, let's have a look. You're probably looking at about, maybe it's about 10, 15 lumens there. That's a guesstimate because I couldn't find it in the literature. That's just my guesstimate. Maybe even higher than that, maybe about 20. I'm not sure, probably at least 10. And then on the highest, it should go up to around, I'm reckoning that, that's probably about 2,500 or 2,200. That's just, again, just a guesstimate. And that's pretty impressive. I mean, I can feel the heat on my hand there. So you can also go higher than that up to the turbo. So if you double click, see the double click and the brightness ramp there? Right, now that is very hot. I'm having to move my hand away. That's 3,500 lumens. Now bear in mind that will depend on your cell that you're using because this uses a FET driver. And I know I keep saying this because people in the comments sections keep saying, you know, that the amps and the battery has nothing to do with output. Unfortunately, on this it does because it's got a FET. It's essentially like a vampire. It's, it says to the battery, "Okay, what do you got? Give me what you got," and it sucks as much as it can. Um, so, the, if you use a really, really cheap cell with a low amp and it's pretty crap, what's going to happen is you're going to get less lumens than if you use a high quality cell, unfortunately. I would love to say that's not the case because I'm a cheapskate myself, but it is, so you, you might as well get the high amp ones. Okay, so there's your basic function, so on, off and ramping. Now you can change that ramping, so what you can do is, when it's on, if you double press, so we'll double press, there, there was a little flicker there which you probably won't see, but now if I press and hold, watch what happens. Now, now is it doing it? It's not, so I'll, I'll, I shall do it again. It's three, one, two, three. There, it flickered properly this time. So now if you watch what happens to the ramp, it's no longer smooth, it becomes stepped. So I'll press and hold. Can you see it stepping rather than ramping smoothly? So step, 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 you see? 
Now, the whole point of that is it gives you some sort of visual representation of where you are in that ramping. That doesn't bother me. So, one, two, three. I tend to like smooth ramp like that. They're smooth up. That there, there's no apparent steps. There are steps there, but you just can't see them with the human eye. So I prefer that. But that option is there if you want it. So there are your basic settings. Okay. So you've got your on off. You can change the ramping, and you've got turbo. Now you've also got the three click selection. Okay. So if we do three clicks, you get a battery check. So one, two, three. So you get a battery check. Now let's explain this because it doesn't do it as a percentage. So one two three four so that's four volts and then one so 4.1 volts or uh, 4.10 anyway so that means it's virtually full bearing in mind it's about 4.20 for a full cell now most flashaholics will know that muggles and non-flashaholics won't understand that they would probably pre prefer something like a blinking out of a percentage but i don't really think this is aimed at muggles anyway so that's irrelevant especially with a ui like this so that's handy to see it lets you know how much of a voltage is coming from the battery so nice to see so within those battery modes so one two three so there's your battery check you can move on so two quick presses will take you on to the next mode so one two you're probably thinking, right, it's not doing anything. It is. That's what they call, it's sometimes called good night mode or better known as sunset mode. So what happens is that's on. This will gradually, very, very gradually over about an hour go until it turns off. In other words, it will ramp down very slowly. Um, if you want to pretend you're on the beach going to sleep or you're reading a romantic book, maybe it's handy. I don't, I don't know if I would have a use for that or you're scared of the dog or something. Maybe that's what it's for. Okay, so the next mode is beacon. So another two clicks. So we're now getting beacon. So beacon is quite handy. You can use it for positioning and uh, sign signaling and things like that. So it just flashes on and off. That's all it does, which is handy. It's a handy feature when you're camping or you're, I don't know, doing some sort of outdoor missions, whatever your job specifics are. So the next mode is a temp check. So if we go one, two, Right, it's going to flash out the temperature. So again, it's going to do this numerically. So you got one, two, so there's 20, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 27 degrees. Now that doesn't mean it's 27 degrees in this room. It means it's 27 degrees right down there near the LED where the temperature sensor is anyway. So that's a good indicator of the internal temperature. So nice to see, it's a great feature. Um, I would use that when testing ramping and testing because you can't alter the temperature step down in this. Now, I wouldn't recommend most people do that, but you can do it and that helps you monitor what's happening in, in, internally. Okay, so moving on from three clicks, you've got the four click mode. So four click modes is a lockout. So one, two, three, four. Right, there was a little flicker there. Now it won't work, although it will slightly. So another, the whole point of an E lockout means is you can't accidentally turn it on in your pocket or a bag. Okay, so what they used to do was E lockout meant it would be totally inoperable. Now what they do is because of Andural, it does let you get a very low mode. So if that does go on your pocket, it's not an issue, but it means you don't have to unlock it to, to quickly read a map or quickly do something. Now, one thing I did notice was it's missing one thing. So yes, it does have this handy feature in lockout. You can get a little mode. Now, what it doesn't have is, now if I compare this to the FW3A by Lumentop, this has um, Andural as well. Now, if you watch, so if we go one, two, three, four, right, that's locked. No, uh, it will be in a minute. Hang on, let's turn it on. Right, so one, two, three, four. Right, now it's locked. Okay, so this has the same feature where it's got a low mode, but watch, if you double click, you can get a semi-higher mode. So there's two modes within that lockout. Now there isn't on this one, which is weird. You've got this, and then two clicks does now. So I don't know why that's missing that feature. Maybe that was a specialist add-on just for the FW3A. Okay, so lockout, I really appreciate that. For anyone who doesn't have lockout on their flashlights, a little trick you can do is, so one, two, three, four, let's turn that back to normal. So it'll go on and off. And one trick you can do is you can just disengage the circuit. So give it a half turn. If I do it enough, there you go. There, it will no longer function. And that, that that's the same for most flashlights. So if you don't have that function, that's one way around it. It's called, it's like a hardware hack. Okay, so then back on. Okay, so you also have five clicks, which allows you to go to what's called momentary mode. Some people call that a tactical mode, but this isn't really a tactical uh, light. Most tactical lights would probably have a tail switch or a pressure switch for a firearm or something like that. So five clicks, one, two, three, four, five. 
right there's a little flicker there now we're in momentary mode now all momentary mode is it will go on or off that's it you can't leave it on it, you, it's either on or it's off momentary or nothing so that's all you get so in order to turn that off if you just disengage the circuit there you go right back on Boosh. right we're back to normal mode okay there so it'll go on and off and different ramping modes okay Right, moving on rapidly because I, I, I don't want this review to go on for hour after hour like most of them. You've got six clicks. Now in this one, this will turn into what's called muggle mode. So what's a muggle? Well, if you don't know and you don't realise, muggles are non-magic users in the Harry Potter universe. So what this is, what this name is suggesting, if you're not a flashaholic, you don't know all the ins and outs of these things, it keeps it simple. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, we're now in muggle mode. What's muggle mode? Well, it limits the functions massively. So you can turn it on and you can turn it off, but you can also still ramp. You just can't ramp as much. So it ramps moderately, but not high. And then it ramps low-ish, but not the lowest. So in other words, if that's the lowest and that's the highest setting, it limits you to between these two values. So you don't get the full range of ramping, which I think is sensible and on off and that's it. So that's great if you're handing this flashlight to someone and don't know anything about flash flashlights. They're not a flashaholic. You don't want them to break anything and you don't want the head to explode trying to understand the UI. That's an excellent mode. So just remember, if you want to get all those modes back, one, two, three, four, five, six, you're back to normal. So let's just check that. Right, it ramps all the way up now. My hand's getting hot and that should ramp all the way down. Yeah, perfect. Right, we're out of muggle mode. Right, you also have a seven click mode. So you're probably thinking, how many more functions do we need? Right. Okay, so seven clicks is for the backlight. Now the backlight is the small LEDs behind the power switch. So when it's on, it's green. When it's off, it's dark. So what you can do is you can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right now, when that's off, so you can see that's off, this will be on all the time, okay? So you've got off, low, high, and beacon, I think, off the top of my head. So let's try the, the next mode. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, that's higher. So there's a massive amount of light coming out of there, which I wouldn't sort of want to leave on because it creates a parasitic drain i'll probably go for the much lower mode but that it's there if you want it so so you've got so it was off we tried low this is high the next one is beacon in other words this should flash so one two three four five six seven and i'll show you a close-up there it's slightly overexposed there so it's hard to see there that's better right can you see that i quite like that it almost looks animated it flashes vividly and then flashes a half amount so i quite like that interesting feature i'll probably leave it on that um it reminds me of the the rapid flashes you get on the army tech stuff so interesting i quite like that and then if you did another seven clicks it would be off again so it depends what you like i mean i quite like that light turned on all the time i do on the lumen tops it may i keep this on a windowsill and what it means is i can i can find it easily in the dark because of that obviously if it's turned away i can't but that's you know Turn it the right way and it's not an issue. Okay, so you're probably thinking, thank goodness, no more UI. I don't need to learn anything else. Ha ha, wrong. There's even more modes. So moving on rapidly again. So you've got click, click, hold mode. So if we go click, click, hold. Right. What we've got here is we've got sub modes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the next mode. Right. Okay. So this this is how it should start. If you click, click, hold, you should get what's called candle. Now what's candle? Now, if you look very carefully at my hand, you can see what's happening is it's rapidly and randomly. It, it almost seems to use a random seed where it will, it will flicker like a candle. In other words, the intensity is on a candle can flicker and splutter. It's certainly not standard, is it? So you can see it change in there. So that's quite interesting. Now within this mode, you can click and hold to increase intensity. So you see how it's getting brighter, which is nothing like a candle. That's more like a bloody flamethrower. Or you can click and hold to decrease it. Yeah, that's probably more like a candle. Um, although in white light, it doesn't really work. You're probably better off getting a warmer tint to pretend it's a candle. Okay, so your next mode, um, if you double click, right, so that is your bike flasher. Okay, so you're probably thinking, what the hell is bike flasher? Right, well, bike flasher is, you can put this on a bike in a bracket, obviously, and 
there's a flicker within that light, so depending on how, how, how much you set it. Um, and that flicker draws attention to you, and it, it, it makes you safer on a bike, basically. That's the whole point of it. So it's nice to have that. I mean, I probably wouldn't use that, but it's there if you want it. Um, and then the next mode, in fact, within, within that mode, sorry, I should say, you can click and hold to increase intensity, or click hold down and then decrease intensity. So you can set that how high you want it, and you still get a little bit of a flicker there. It's very hard to perceive there. There, you can just see it there. It's easier when it's more intense there, you can see it. Okay, so that's your bike mode. Okay, so you've, you've seen candle, and then that's bike mode, and then the next one I think is party mode, so um, double click. Yeah, that's party mode. Now, well, I'll cover that slightly because I don't want people with epilepsy to suffer. Now, party mode just means it's flashing. Not necessarily at its highest setting, but it's flashing. Now, you can change the settings here, so I'm covering that slightly, but you can still see the effects of it. So if I hold, it changes the um, speed at which that's happening. So that's rather rapid there. So if I click and hold, changes it down, 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 down. There you can see it. It's much more apparent there, isn't it? So it slows that frequency of the um, strobe down. Okay, so the next mode is tactical. So now I will have to cover that because people will suffer. I'll just turn that down a bit there. Right, okay, so what's tactical? It's maximum output um, and a strobe which you can change. So if I click and hold, it changes the frequency to change 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 there so it's very rapid you probably can't even hardly see it there you can a little bit on the camera there so if I click and hold it reduces that see how it gets slower 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 now it's very slow for a strobe that there so you can see and it's extremely bright so click and hold and increases intent increases the intensity in other words the frequency of um, the on off on off and then I'll turn that off because again I don't want to annoy people okay so thank goodness for that right now there are one more mode after that, so if we go back to that, click, click, hold. So we're on tactical there, there's one left, okay, so double click. Right, lightning storm, so that's supposedly emulating the effect you get from lightning during a thunderstorm. So you get nothing, okay, and then a little bit of intensity and flicker, and then you should get a big in there, boof, flash, flash, just like a lightning storm. So. I can't imagine ever using that unless I was maybe having a Halloween party, you know, or worked for the Weather Channel. That's about it. So we'll turn that off. Okay. So a lot going on there in the UI, a hell of a lot. And as you can see, this is flashing. Um, if you didn't, if you didn't want that, remember one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it's off. Okay. Right. Let's discuss this. Um, I just want to do some quick comparisons, actually. Um, I mean, multi-emitters, um, oh, this is the obvious choice um, of comparison. Um, it's much smaller, same UI, but the output's slightly different. You, you, you probably get about 2,800 lumens, whereas this, you're getting well over 3,000. So you're getting more lumens out of this, and because this is an 18650, um, you're not going to get the same capacity, and this doesn't have USB recharging. Um, but this is still a decent light, um, and but this is better for close-up because it's a triple emitter and they are all behind a frosted TIR optic there rather than a reflector. So if you're, if you're more interested in close-up stuff, the Lumentop FW3A would probably be a better option. It's certainly more pocketable. This is quite hard to fit in a pocket. I did carry this for two weeks, um, and I'll tell you something, the paint's done brilliant. Look. None of it's come off, although I, I will admit I didn't drop this at all, whereas I, I certainly did with the FW3. There's one of the dings, um, but the paint's done fantastic, so no no complaints there. Um, it's just quite heavy in the pocket. Um, I, I think this design's bulky, but that's just an aesthetic thing, and that's my personal opinion. I'm not going to mark them down for that, and these are totally sharp, so if you've got a bit of Parmesan or Regino and you want to put that on your pasta, you can, you can use them, but um, I don't think that's what it's intended for. So there's one option which is a lot smaller. Um, another option which you might want to look at, if you thought, no, I want more output, you can go up to the ridiculous heights of this, you know, thousands and thousands of lumens more than this. Um, this is the MSRD4, but the problem this is it gets rather hot. Um, but as you can see, massive output there, um, and it, but it gets really hot really quick. But nice, it's got a ramping interface, you can ramp it up and you can ramp it down again. So similar to this, but different UI. Um, and very, very pocketable. Look at the size there, so pretty decent. Um, another option you might want to think of, just, just in this range, uh, would be if you want something even smaller, you could go for the S43. This is using the shortened tube, just to make, make you aware of that. Um, the S43 wouldn't have this copper section. This is the S43S by Astrolux. 
um, decent light, um, quad emitter, um, non-frosted, but it is a TIR optic, so it's nice and floody, um, as you can see, and beautiful little light. Um, and just for pocketability, I mean, look, it's tiny, very, very, very small. Um, I mean, you only you only get about 2,500 lumens out of this, whereas this is 3,500, so a lot higher. And although, to be to be honest, it does have charging now. Unfortunately, it's a micro USB rather than Type C, which is a shame. So this is better, and is, this charges more rapidly. Uh, but this is still good if you, for size considerations. Anyway, um, if you wanted to go ridiculous levels to nearly 7,000 lumens, you could go a little bit bigger. So let's put them together. So if we put the bases, so. I'm seeing a little bit bigger. It actually isn't. They use the same battery. Um, it doesn't have USB charging. I would guess, I'm no electrical engineer, but I would say there would be something of a size increase on this to accommodate some sort of charging system. So I'll let them off for that. So they're, they're about the same size, let's say. But this will give you a ridiculous, I mean, look at all the, the emitters on there. And it does have auxiliary emitters, which are on when it's not in use. So if we double click on that, you can see massive brightness there, ridiculous levels. Um, I can't even put my hand there. You're getting about 6,900 lumens out of that. That's the Fireflies E07. E so just, I would probably go for that um, if I didn't care about um, onboard charging. If I wanted onboard charging, obviously I would pick this. And the price of this is massive in comparison to that. The price of the Fireflies is very, very high, which is which is a shame because it's a beautiful light. Okay, a couple of other options. Um, if you wanted a more of a smooth reflector, but it's similar size, um, but without the USB charge. And there's the Convoy S12, which is, I haven't even reviewed this yet. Um, it's a triple emitter, which is quite interesting. So I will try that at some point, and it's a tail clicker. I love tail clickers, the only problem is you can't really tail stand a lot of them. You can with these ones because of the design. So that one will stand if I do it properly there. So it will stand. Um, and this can tail stand as well, which is a which is a welcome feature. Um, another quick option if you wanted, a, in my opinion anyway, a better reflector, um, but no USB charging and not the same output is the S11 by Convoy. Again, another tail clicker. It's got a beautiful warm tint though. I really like that light, as you can see. There, it just gives you a nice sort of a nice look and a color reproduction there. So that's one option. But look, it is actually bigger. So it's a lot longer, so it's harder to put in your pocket, unfortunately. But uh, I think this is a decent light. I tried this and this on a field outside um, for about 20 minutes, just weighing up options, and I preferred the beam on this. I'm not sure what they've done to the reflector here. I think maybe that needs a redesign. I'm not sure. Um, another option, if you want something a bit smaller, um, thin-wise anyway, but it only runs on an 18650. This is the Olight M2T, I think, Warrior, is it? Never remember the name of this. Yeah, there it is. M2T Warrior. A um, little bit overpriced, I think, for the, the OLED, but this will give you, it's more tactical, and this will give you about 1600 lumens, and it's got a, a nice tactical switch there, which most people don't need. You know, they say tactical, but how often do you, are you in a tactical situation? Thankfully, not very often. Okay, so let's move them all out the way. Let's give it a mock instead of me waffling on for, for forever and a day. Okay, so. Um, pros and cons, right, the pros price, I really like the price, um, it's pretty low for what you're getting, you're getting a nice package here, it uses a 21700 which I like, they've got great amperage and good good sort of uh, capacity wise, milliamp hour speaking, it uses Anduril which is brilliant, you've got every option under the sun, you really can't complain, you've got everything going on there, and it's USB type C and it rapidly charges. I think they've done. I think they've done really, really well. When I first got this, um, I, I, it felt quite bulky, and I thought, "Oh, I'm not that impressed." I'll probably give it about seven out of ten. But I will admit, I was wrong. And um, the more the more I used it, the more I liked it, and the more I appreciated it, all the features and the fact it does a lot for a low price. Um, I'm not sure about the beam profile, but maybe that's just my eyes and being picky. Um, which I'm not really sort of sure about. The, this particular tint seems to have green artifacts for me. Maybe that's just my eyes. Again, not my cup of tea. Um, I don't really think it's IBX 8, but they've done a decent job. Yeah, if you listen, listen. Did you hear that? There's a sort of an air sucking sound when you open that, so it does seem to be a particularly good seal. It's better than a lot of the daft flaps I see, so well done Astrolux. I will commend you on that. You have done a decent job on a design which I generally don't like. Um, and it feels a bit chunky and you've got these, listen, you can hear it pulling the skin off there. In fact, you can see it coming off, look. 
So that's very sharp. I don't know what that's all about. I don't know whether that's... So if a ninja attacks you, you can hit him in the forehead with that and, you know, give him sergeant stripes or something. I don't know what that's for. Okay, so let's give this a mark out of 10. Like I say, when I first got it, wasn't that impressed. I was going to give it a 7 out of 5. But after carrying it for two weeks, I've used it, I've charged it. I've tried it in many different locations, indoors, outdoors, in garages, uh, in fields, in the woods. Um, I'm going to give this an 8.5 because I think it deserves it. There's a few things I would change, but I don't think they're enough to detract from the fact that it's a decent light. And for this price, I really think they've done a decent job. So if I was in charge of Astrolux, I would change this reflector slightly. I certainly wouldn't buy this tint. I would go for the 5000K. Um, what else? Let's have a think. And I would make the body a little bit less chunky. Um, at least these lanyard holes are nice and wide. I like to see that because then it gives you attachment options. But they've done a decent job, so I have to give it an 8.5. Um, I have to be honest, 8.5. So enough of me waffling. You've probably had enough of my voice. So let's get outside and I'll compare it with the other stuff.